Hello, good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome to our stock seminar today. Let's have a, a simple copium discussion, okay? So, welcome. Uh, the stock market has been quite good, okay? Uh, it also amazes me, okay? I thought that there might be a further correction after this September drop. It did not, okay? In fact, it went up to all-time high again, okay? Look at the Dow Jones. It hits 36,000 points, okay? And S&P 500 is crazy. Now it's at almost 4,700 points, okay? So in the last one month, it has been a terrific month. And that's, that's why we have this discussion today, okay? In fact, the tapering did not even stop this stock market from reaching its all-time high again, okay? So let's have a simple discussion. I'm sure all of you will have a lot of questions, okay? So if you want to uh, so-called uh, ask any questions, uh, do feel free okay, to comment in the comment box, okay? If you are in the room, can you please say hi to me? Just give me a thumbs up so that I know you are here, okay? So that I can communicate with you, all of you, okay? So let me see who are in the room now, okay? Um, Enzo Ong, hi, hi, Sui Fan Lo, hello, Alfred, uh, Wee Tiong Tan, okay, NVIDIA and Tesla stock has been crazy, you're right, okay, you're right. One of my favorite 5G counter is, in fact, I have been mentioning over the last few months, uh, it's called NVIDIA, okay, it's called NVIDIA, okay. So it has been powerfully going up. Let us take a look at how is the market situation, uh, especially when it comes to this, this share. Um, it has been crazy, okay? Ever since uh, September, uh, when it reached almost a $200 bottom, okay? Bottom at somewhere around $200, it has been climbing, okay, uh, to a new high figure. And today, uh, on Friday close, okay, which is uh, not Friday close, yesterday, it closes at somewhere around uh, $297, right? It went to all-time high of $314. Of course, this is one of my favorite. I, I already mentioned many, many times in Facebook Live, in YouTube Live. This is my favorite 5G counter. Okay, it should be in our all-time watch list. Okay, especially, especially when next year we are talking about the whole world going to implement 5G, right? So there will be a lot of 5G implementation and definitely one of the stock you need to watch out for is this counter. Okay, put it in the watch list. I don't mean you need to buy it now because it has gone up a lot. But every time there's a correction, make sure you're in the game, okay? So, um, what happened is uh, today I'm going to open up uh, a bit of chart, okay, to let you see about NVIDIA, okay, this counter, okay? Um, basically, uh, yeah, this is a very complicated chart, okay? I'm using a lot of what we call uh, moving average lines to show you uh, roughly NVIDIA, where is the support now, okay? Where's the support now, okay? So if some of you have been uh, looking at charts and you play around with some indicators, and one of the favorite, I would say, one of the favorite indicators that a lot of charters like to use is uh, exponential moving average, or, or, or you can call it, okay, moving average lines, basically. It means the average price of your share, okay? So what happened is uh, in September or early, Gen uh, early October, NVIDIA uh, went okay, to almost a $200 uh, supporting trend line. And you can see that the moment it rebounded off the blue color trend line, okay, all these are called uh, moving average lines. The moment it rebounded off the EMA lines, okay, on almost, okay, at the mid of October, you can see the powerful run up, okay, you can see the powerful run up, okay. And especially when the short-term moving average crosses the long-term moving average, okay? Uh, the short-term, which is the bunch of red color uh, lines, crosses the blue color lines, okay? That's where the powerful run-up starts, okay? Somewhere around mid of... Okay, let me take a look, okay? Uh, let me use a software to expand this area. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, here. Okay, I want you to see this area here. Okay, so you can see this bunch of crossover here, whereby the short term EMA, which is the red color lines, okay, crosses the blue color mid term EMA. Okay, so the longer time frame, uh, long, long, longer uh, uh, EMA lines, okay, 
So the moment the crossover occurred, okay, you can see this very powerful run up, okay? Oh. So that is NVIDIA, okay? What I mean is now it's, it's still not at the support point. So try not to buy uh, into NVIDIA today, okay? At this price now. Oh. So make sure that uh, there's a bit of correction. Oh. So hopefully it, it, it does correct to a strong support, okay? Hopefully near the no, blue color EMA lines, okay, which is a longer time frame EMA lines. Basically, uh, I'm using uh, uh, what we call the uh, GMMA, okay, you can do a search, okay, online uh, about this indicator, okay. So, uh, it's called the Gaupi uh, Multi Moving Average Lines, okay, which I think is quite useful if you want to know roughly where is the support line, right. So, uh, if eventually, okay, next year, if there's a correction, okay, I do think in the first half of next year, definitely there will be one correction, okay? I've been waiting so long, but it has not happened yet, okay? There's not a big enough correction for me to really go all out to buy shares. Even if I buy shares today, I'll be a bit hesitant, okay? So uh, I always advise investors, if you are new to the stock market, the best time to buy shares is when there is a big enough correction. And every year, supposedly every year, there should be one big correction, okay? So till now, because of this government stimulus package, uh, we haven't have a big one. In September, there is a drop, but the magnitude of this drop, I would say, is still quite small. It's somewhere around 6 to 7% drop, which I don't feel is cheap enough. The stocks today are not cheap enough, okay? So for me to go all out, so even if I want to buy, uh, definitely it is only for short term, okay? Then uh, I'm, I'm not going to buy and hold long term because it's not cheap enough, okay? But anyway, uh, my point is if eventually, uh, whether is it in the next few months or next year, if there is a big enough correction, this is one stock that I would like you to put inside your watch list, okay? Now, coming back to uh, another stock that, okay, a lot of you are watching, it's called Tesla, right? Uh, in fact, okay, this is my view of Tesla, okay? Of course, today, uh, just treat it as a reference, okay? Uh, my view is, in fact, uh, still my own opinion based on my experience, okay? I don't recommend Tesla as a long-term uh, stock that should be in our watch list, okay? What is the reason is because I think it's overhyped, that's number one. Number two, uh, to me, in the automobile industry, it doesn't have a strong enough uh, attraction for me because it is dealing with electric vehicle or uh, EV, okay, EV cars, okay? Their part of their business is still in EV. Maybe they are going to sell batteries in futures, okay? I, 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 I am not so sure, okay? What is the direction, okay? But they are not making that attractive uh, earnings, for me to invest this stock for the long haul, okay? The moment, like I always said, the moment smart car comes out, okay? There can be only one, or there can be only two companies in this world that can uh, manufacture smart automobile, okay? And the first is Apple, and the second is Google, okay? Ah, so the difference between EV car EV car industry versus smart car industry, okay? Is that EV car are pretty dumb, okay? Smart car has an intelligence of 200, okay? So, uh, okay, just a joke, okay? Smart car means when you sit inside the car, the car will do anything for you because it has applications. It has a lot of applications. And there are only two companies that monopolize the whole world of application today. One is Google and the other is Apple, okay? So, uh, as you all know, Tim Cooks, okay, um, in January mentioned they are going to come out with their first smart car on earth in the year 2024, okay? I look forward to this announcement again, okay? So, if they start to launch their first smart car on earth, okay, I would say it will take up a lot of market share in the automobile industry, okay? So, uh... And I feel that Tesla cannot compete unless, unless, unless they partner with Android, unless Google sell the Android system to Tesla, okay? 
And that is a different story. It's almost like Samsung today rely on Google Android to uh, compete with Apple. Okay, without Google Android, without the uh, 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 so-called applications, it's a, it's a dead handphone. Nobody will go and buy. Nobody is buying Huawei handphone today, by the way. Okay, because it doesn't have application. You can't use TikTok. You can't use Facebook. You can't go to YouTube. You can't use Google Map. Okay, it's being sanctioned. Okay, U.S. government is sanctioning Huawei, this company. Okay, so unless Tesla in future has access to all these applications, if not, I will feel that. Okay, uh, definitely, uh, Apple will take out a big chunk. Okay, of the electric vehicle industry, and uh, smart car is really totally different. Okay, that means you sit inside the car, you tell Siri what you want to do, and Siri will do the job for you. You want Siri to open up your bank account and take a look at how how much expense you have incurred this month, okay? And Siri will do the job for you. You tell Siri, I want to order a McDonald's meal while sitting inside your car seat, okay? Siri will do the job for you because you have access to McDonald's applications, okay? So all applications in this world today run on only two platforms. One is iOS and the other is Android, okay? So, but having said that, because Apple hasn't even launched its car, we don't know what kind of model is it. We don't even know, does it run on battery, right? So that's the reason why there's a bit of hype going into this electric vehicle, okay? So, um, however, having said that, uh, going forward in the next one to two years, if you hear a bit of more rumors how Apple smart car is, uh, it might bring a bit of impact, okay, to Tesla, okay? So uh, just take note, okay? Lance Quack asked this question, okay, what is my view on this company called ATVI, okay, Activision Blizzard, right? Okay, Activision Blizzard, I would say, is hit by a lot of uh, bad news in regards to its board, its members, okay, um, they are in litigation, okay, lawsuits whatsoever, okay, and this bad news really has a hit on this company. So the share price from most $104, it dropped to as low as $64 recently, right? And uh, the last few days, okay, in the last few days, they have a, a so-called a, a, a result, okay, a earnings announcement result uh, that uh, I, I, I would say the market, okay, uh, did not actually uh, welcome. And that's why there is a big gap, okay, from almost $78 to as low as uh, $65, okay? So, uh, this is a good company, I would say, for the future because it's one of the best in terms of, of, of games manufacturer, right? So, Activision Blizzard or Take-Two, okay? So, uh, in fact, its competitor called Take-Two has a much, uh, I would say, much better trend, okay? Okay, this is Take-Two, uh, okay? So, it's on a huge uptrend after falling for a few months, right? So from almost $200, it fall to as low as $144. And there was a climb back, okay? There was a climb back, okay? So it actually rebounded, okay? And uh, definitely it's not floating above the red color uh, EMA lines, okay? So uh, this is a reverse in fortune, okay? So I really hope that uh, this uh, activation, okay, can be like take two, uh, is suddenly recovered, okay? So it's a good company. There are a lot of games, uh, I would say, that uh, people like, especially when it comes to uh, Activision Blizzard, okay? So this is also one company that is in my watch list, but because the trend hasn't changed yet, okay, ATVI, uh, so I may not want to buy it yet, okay? It's still below all the EMA lines, okay? Still is on the huge downtrend, okay? Later, I'll recommend a few shares, Okay, for you going forward, uh, that uh, that may have a turnaround. So for this case, I will wish that uh, this stock you know, has a turnaround. At least it needs to go beyond all the EMA lines, okay, for it to reverse, okay? And later I will share with you uh, these two lines that I have now. It's called the CRS, uh, monthly CRS lines. So the monthly CRS lines still act as a resistance to this share, okay? So hopefully there's a turnaround. Okay, good. Okay, welcome, welcome to our stock seminar today. Uh, I understand some of you 
uh, might think that the stock market has been really, really good. Okay, so uh, you might, you know, be impatient. You might want to jump in fast. Okay, but uh, having been in the stock market for so long, okay, almost uh, two decades. Okay, so I always know one thing: the moment market is crazy, uh, you definitely need to be very careful. Uh, so there may be a case whereby suddenly everything tank. Okay, huge volatility might come into the game. So I want you in the next few months still be very vigilant and caref careful, okay? Of course, uh, you can go for short-term gains, but definitely this is not the time to go all in, okay? Even if you want, uh, make sure you park just a little bit of money, try to play small gains, okay? Uh, there are many stocks that are very cheap now, okay? Only buy stocks that already undergone a correction. Okay, and there's huge bullish momentum starting. So in the next 45 minutes, what I'm going to do is today I'm going to share with you some of my opinion about the stock market, number one. Number two, about the sector rotation play. Oh, there are some sector that has, I would say, already gone weak. Okay, they are strong in the last few months, but this month they have already gone weak. So I want you to avoid these sectors. Okay, and number three, Okay, what are the stocks to look at that has already fallen for the last few months and now there's huge bullish momentum uh, starting, okay? So your risk is definitely lower if you go and buy such shares, okay? Okay, good. So let me talk about the market first, okay? So first, I would like you to see this chart, which is the S&P 500 index. Definitely is at all-time high figure. Ah, uh, so uh, it reached almost four thousand seven hundred point. So let me blow up my chart. I'm going to use uh, this TD Ameritrade, okay, to show you the chart of this index. Okay, if some of you pay attention to my last Facebook Live video, okay, I did a video in uh in October, okay, early October, okay. I did say that uh, September is a bad month and uh, we did issue a so-called uh, a forecast that uh, this index has a chance of falling if it crash below 4,300 figure, okay? So uh, that video was shot in Chinese. I was speaking in Chinese, okay, to our uh, followers. So we did say that there is a, chart pattern called the head and shoulder forming in the S&P 500 index. So if you have heard what I said uh, one month ago, okay, in early March, okay, if you, have said, if you have heard what I said, can you give me a one sign so that I know you are paying attention, okay, to some of our comments, okay, and opinions. We did say that at 4,300, it is a support, okay, it's what we call a, a head and shoulder support line, okay. So this is the left shoulder, this is the head, and this is the right shoulder, right? So we did draw this diagram. Left shoulder, head, and right shoulder, okay? We did say that there is a very strong support somewhere around 4,300 points. And if it does break this, uh, there might be further drop or even a crash might start. Thank you for your ones, okay? Thank you, Unfen. Thank you. Yahui Wong, okay? But guess what? I guess God helped the market, okay? Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, okay? Helped the market to sustain this rally, okay? Over the last few weeks, he, hold, he held a lot of conferences. He tried his very best to pacify the market again, okay? Again, okay? And it really, really disappointed me. It really disappointed me. I hope that I can get Apple at $130. I hope that I can buy into NVIDIA at $180, okay? Who knows, from that point onwards, it rallied, it rallied, the whole market rallied, okay? Because not only it did not break the 4,300 barrier, it turned out that it is a very strong support. It turned out that it's very strong support, and from that point, it actually rallied, okay? So this is what we call technical charting. Uh, a support is still a support until it break. Until it break, okay? So it did not break and it rallied, okay? Then what happened? 
in the last video, in the last video, I talked about this thing called the CRS monthly indicator. If some of you heard what I said, okay, just give me a two sign. Okay, just give me a two sign. Okay, this is called the CRS line. Okay, I rely a lot on the CRS line to tell me what happened this month. Is it a bullish month or is it a bearish month? So this is what I call the CRS line. Okay, I call it the CRS indicators. Okay. So if you have been to our class, okay, we have joined our team, okay, join our family, you should know what is the CRS lines. Okay, every month I will rely on this indicator to tell me whether is it bullish or bearish. Okay. So what happened is at the start of every month, thank you for your tools. Okay, at the start of every month, okay. If the first week of the month at the end of the first week of the month, if it's above the two lines, it's called the bullish area. That means this month, most likely, there may be a bullish trend. So if it's in between the two lines, that is why I call the no play zone. There's no direction yet. But if it's falling below the two lines without touching the two lines, that's why I call the bearish zone, right? So anytime the index fall in the bearish area, I will be very vigilant and careful because this might be one big crash or one big correction and I might want to avoid buying shares, okay? But if it's in the bullish area, it shows that there's a certain support. So uh, you can play, okay? Having said that, okay, it has run a lot to all-time high today. I would strongly suggest you to go short term, okay? Pick up some shares that has already corrected, okay? So what happened is, okay? My video at the time was shot at the early of October. We did say there's a strong support at 4,003, right? For S&P uh, 500 index. Then it did not actually fall below the head and shoulder support line. Instead, during the mid-month of October, it went beyond or it went above the two lines into the bullish area. The exact date I saw this thing is on the 15th of October okay mid month of October so immediately what I did is I alerted some of our you know uh, uh, classmates our graduates that most likely instead of crashing most likely it has turned bullish okay so let me show you what happened uh, during mid of October so this is uh, a forum whereby our graduates actually every day we communicate and uh, it's called US Stocks and Options. Of course, it's a private group, okay, of 6,500 members. So what happened is that day, uh, this graduate called Cleo asked me this question. Dear Daniel, has S&P turned bullish? Okay. So looking at the CRS line, I said yes. Okay, I said yes. Okay. Three weeks ago, I did say that, okay? Then, uh, of course, uh, one of our students comment, hey, what happened to your double up rule, Daniel? You say that most likely the index, once it double up, there might be a danger whereby it might, it might collapse, right? At least 10 to 15%. Isn't that applicable anymore, <laughs> okay? It did not even correct 10%, it corrected only 6%, right? And now you say, Daniel, you're you are bullish again, okay? What's wrong? So I did comment this. I feel that it is only a short-term uptrend, okay? It's only a short-term uptrend. The big drop hasn't even come yet. That's really my sincere opinion during mid of October, okay? I know that there is bullish momentum going forward. And I know that it might head towards all-time high again. Uh, but this is still not the crash I'm anticipating. This is still not the big correction I'm anticipating, okay? So even if you buy, make sure it's for short-term gains, okay? So that is my point today. And my point is, if in the next, if in the last one month, you did make some money, especially after mid of October, I would say hopefully you have some profit target, Tesla isn't going to run another 100% in the next one year. 
Uh, most likely Tesla will have some drop along the way. There's some correction along the way. Most likely S&P 500 index, after this tapering starts in December, uh, most likely there might be some correction, especially in the next few months. Uh, so hopefully, even if you buy shares, put some stop losses. Make sure your stop loss is tight, just in case the market crash down. And always bear in mind, Okay, before a big market correction, normally what happens is there will be a certain amount of what we call irrationality, right? Irrational exuberance, which is, I would say, the best words to describe a market that is crazy. And these two words are coined by Alan Greenspan, which is our XX Fed chairman, XXX Fed chairman, okay? So he wrote a book called Irrational Exuberance, okay? To describe a crazy market. Then let me share with you why. Why normally before a market correction, there's a bit of craziness going into a stock market. It is almost to me a chance whereby the big players who has been in the game for the last one and a half years, they've been buying stocks crazily. Whether is it Tesla, Nvidia, Microsoft, Apple, okay, all these stocks crazily. It's time for them to unwind some position. It's time for them to take some profits. And the only time they can take profit is to push the stock to the highest peak, right? That's when they can let go of their positions, okay? Because you don't want to scare the market out. If you scare the market out, you can't liquidate so much of their positions, okay? So there's a bit of what we call irrationality. Normally, going into a, a, a correction phase, okay? Of course, I don't want to dampen the spirits, okay? But I want to, in fact, uh, share with you this, okay? You can still buy some stocks today, but make sure uh, you put a tight stop loss just in case everything goes wrong in the next few months, okay? Just in, just in case suddenly, okay, in just one week, the market crash, right? Okay, now, what about this month, okay? Let me share with you the view. So you can see this is the first week of November, okay? So November should be quite a fine month, okay, unless something turns wrong, okay? Because the first week of November is above our two CRS lines, it's on the uptrend, okay? It's still on the uptrend, and the support is at 4,500 points, okay? Somewhere around 4,400 to 4,500, okay? The exact figure is 4430 to 4540. So these two are the immediate support for this month. Okay. So most likely, since it's in a bullish zone, most likely this month is bullish. Okay. So what I will do is going forward in the next few months, hopefully I will have a Facebook live review. I will have a YouTube live review to show you whether this month is bullish or bearish. So to better, better prepare for the next correction, right? So what if next month, what if uh, in December, what if the index fall below our two CRS lines, okay? So if it does, I want you to be careful, okay? But so far, so good, okay? After the mid of October rise above the two CRS line, the bull market continues, okay? So far, so good, okay? Now, let us take a look, okay? Uh, about another index called the Nasdaq index. Same, similarly, it has been crazy. Uh, similarly, what happened? October 15, it climbs above the two CRS lines and this month it continued its uptrend. Okay? Same with Dow Jones. Okay, the mini Dow Jones futures. Mid of October was a turnaround. It went above the two CRS line and it continued. Okay, November is still going up in a bullish trend. Uh, but similarly, the support of uh, S&P 500 index, okay, uh, sorry, uh, 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 the, the support of Dow Jones Industrial Average, okay, currently is below the index price, is at around 3,550 points. Uh, sorry, 3, uh, 35,500 points and 34,500 points. Okay, these are two critical support. Okay, for this uh, index, okay, mini Dow Jones futures. Uh, so, so far, so good. Okay, I will say that it is a, a good run. Okay, but having said that, I will say uh, going into the Christmas season, we need to be very, very careful. Okay. Looking back in history, 
in the last few years, there are quite a few corrections that happen in at the end of the year or early of the year. Okay? So let me show you. It happened in 2018. It happened in 2019. Okay? So what happened in 2019 is, uh, you can see, uh, October, it reached a high of, okay, this is a mini Dow Jones, huh? it reached a high of 27,000 points, and in a span of three months, it fall to as low as 22,000 points. That was almost a 5,000 point collapse, okay, in the price. Then in 2018, uh, January, okay, what happened is, uh, same thing, huh? it reached almost 27,000 points, the highest peak. And in just a short two weeks, it falls to almost 23,000 points. Uh, a two weeks collapse can easily wipe off almost 15 to 20% of your index price. Then the same thing happened uh, to this index that's enormous, I will call it irrational exuberance, okay? Irrationality in the stock market, okay? Before the sudden crash, okay? Everything can be gone in just a few days, okay? I always need to remind you whenever the market is crazy, you definitely need to be careful, okay? So over the last three years, there are already three times whereby the market actually falls a lot, uh, either during the end of the year or early of the year. Okay, so okay, although the market is still good now, uh, just be vigilant. Okay, good. Uh, Daniel, can you have at least once a month Facebook Live with us to update on the market trend? Uh, yes. Okay. I will try to, okay, like what I said, I will try to, I will try to notify you, especially during the early start of every month. Huh? That's where normally the trend, I will say, is formed, and you can roughly know whether it's a bullish month or a bearish month, okay? Since November start tapering till mid of next year, what's the outlook for gold as interest rate rises is next year? Uh, Alfred, they said uh, about this commodities called gold. I will say gold has been quite good over the last few days. Uh, in fact, I would say that gold most likely going into the next few months, most likely it will be bullish, okay? So you can see that gold has been bullish at the early start of this month. Uh, it is above our two CRS lines, so it's considered a bullish month. And it's heading towards its very strong resistance of 1,830 points. If it can break off this point, 1,830, <laughs> is the very strong resistance over the last six months okay for for gold okay almost a six months resistance at 1830 so if in the next few weeks or even days okay today is almost 1822 you can break above 1830 with a full candle with a full green candle hopefully it's a bullish candle okay Either it's a Marabusu green candle or a hammer, okay, a big hammer. If it can fully form and close above that figure, 1830, I would say most likely it's heading towards 1900 point. So I'm quite bullish going forward, uh, okay, uh, anticipating an uptrend in this index. And why is it so? It's because Federal Reserve don't dare to say that interest rate will rise soon. That is the reason, okay? So it's delayed, okay? It's delayed. They should have risen interest rate to fight against inflation, but they delay it because they want to taper first. They want to see how the stock market react, okay? They can't release the news of, of interest rate rise. Uh, so most likely, they will only release the news of interest rate rise perhaps in the mid of next year or earliest second quarter of next year. So I will say that in the next few months, there's a good chance that gold might even head towards 1,900 points, okay? That is my prediction, okay? That's my opinion, okay? We shall see how is it, okay? We shall see how is it. But firstly, it must break off the resistance, the barrier of 1,830, okay? Okay. Uh, talking about crypto, okay, crypto has been really crazy, okay, and of course you ask this question about bit index, right? That bit index, okay. Sorry that I can't coin the word, okay. 
because uh, this word is being banned by Facebook. Oh. So uh, that's why I need to be very careful when, when talking about crypto. Okay, So that big index has been really crazy. It has gone up to all-time high figure. Uh, so for me, such a crazy index, I would never try to buy. Okay, But of course, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you can't make money off it. Uh, but just be careful. If you want to touch this kind of index, whereby it has huge volatility, it can go up 20% in one shot. Today, it climbed almost 5,000 points, right? To all-time high figure. Almost all-time high figure again of 67,000, if I'm not wrong. But it can easily drop almost 5,000 to 10,000 in one day. Okay, so to me, um, as an investor, I don't like to stomach such a huge uh, drawdown. So that's why normally I would suggest you to avoid such an index, okay? The only time I will buy this index is when it really crashed a lot, okay? So uh, a few months back, it did crash to half the price of 30,000 point. That's a good pickup point there. But in fact, I'm even look, I'm even more greedy than that. I hope that it can crash to almost 17,000. It did not, okay? It did not. And now today is back up at around 60 plus, right? So to me, uh, I will kind of avoid, okay? I don't like index that's so high. I don't like stocks like Tesla that's at 1,002. Uh, so to me, I always buy stocks when the risk is low when there aren't much volatility, when it has really fallen a lot, then I will take a look, okay? Okay, good. Uh, so today, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to share with you some stocks that I feel in the short term, okay? I did say this word called short term. I don't mean you buy and hope to make double, okay? Or triple its amount, all right? Short term gains, okay? Going forward. Oh, sorry, before that, let me touch on Federal Reserve, uh, what we call the policy, right? So I would say that Federal Reserve did quite a good job in the sense that it knows how to notify the stock market of a change in the monetary policy from a very loose policy to an era of tightening, okay? So I would say that Jerome Powell, Jerome Powell did a marvelous job. Okay, did a marvelous job. In fact, um, uh, is it this week? Yeah, I think it's oh last week. Okay, last week Jerome Powell has uh, this uh 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 what we call a uh, FOMC meeting, right? Oh, uh, Federal Open Market Committee meeting. Okay, whereby he announced that there's going to be tapering. And uh, most likely, it will taper by somewhere around $15 billion every month uh, in terms of the printing of money, in buying back the bonds, okay, the debt. So uh, uh, this is called a, a tightening monetary policy. Okay? And he did hint that most likely this tightening okay, policy will end, uh, this uh, printing of money will end somewhere around mid of next year, right? Somewhere around July period, okay? So that means uh, there won't be any more printing of money in buying back the bonds. So the thing is, uh, I would say that normally, okay, when Federal Reserve talk about tapering, there is what we call a taper tantrum, okay? So most likely the stock market will react. But instead of reacting, it seems like the stock market is celebrating, okay? Why is it so? I would say it's because in July, we already know about this tapering. A few banks like Bank of America and Goldman Sachs already issued the guidance that this tapering may happen at the end of the year. And we already know that every month is going to taper up by $15 billion. So it's no longer a shock to the market. So I would say that Federal Reserve really did a marvelous job, okay? And in fact, last week I was looking at this CNBC news and all the, com uh, all the so-called uh, analysts uh, thinks that Federal Reserve, you know, Jerome Powell, uh, Jerome Powell really did a marvelous speech, okay? In the sense that he know how to actually taper the expectation of the stock market uh, and try to explain that we are not going to increase interest rate so soon. So he no really know, he is really, you know, he, he he, he know how to use words, okay, so that, okay, he's, he, he, he carefully structured the words so that people don't react 
to the panic, okay, of tapering or interest rate. Oh, so I would say that he did a good job. But to me, it's just a delayed tactic. Okay, it's just trying to delay. It's just trying to stop the stock market from falling. Okay, so Federal Reserve can only take so far. And by the way, although Jerome Powell did a marvelous job, he I I predict he won't be the Fed chairman again. Oh, most likely that uh Joe Biden will elect another uh Fed chairman to replace Jerome Powell. Okay, because Jerome Powell is nominated by Donald Trump, and today Donald Trump, his boss is no longer around. Okay, so he's considered, I would say, he co he's considered a Republican candidate, right, for Federal Reserve. Uh, so most likely it will be replaced by a Democrat, and most likely is he will be replaced by a lady. Okay, so uh, who knows? Okay, the moment that lady come about, I don't know whether there will be a bit of panic. Okay. So let us see how is it, how, how is it, okay? So basically, uh, what Federal Reserve move is, they don't want to burst this stock bubble. They don't want to burst this inflation bubble by not announcing the rate hike, although the inflation figures is indeed very, very worrying. Okay, the inflation figure is getting worse. Okay, so Jerome Powell, uh, Powell said that most likely next year, although it's worrying, most likely next year it will start to taper down. But my point is, what happens if this inflation doesn't taper down? What happens if it should pass the 6% mark? So let's take a look at inflation figures today. Okay, all you need to do is just go to Google search engine and type inflation rate, US inflation rate, okay? Then through this uh, trading economics, you can actually see the inflation rate figure of US over the last few months, okay? So what happened is, uh, I've shown this chart before. This is the monthly inflation rate of US. Oh. First half of the year, it was still lying low at somewhere around 1-2%. to 2%. Then in the last few months, it is sustained every month at around 5.3 to 5.4% inflation figure. Okay, and let me tell you, if next year, first half of next year, this figure doesn't go down, interest rate needs to shoot up very fast. Okay, not only does it need to rise by 0.25 okay, percent, it needs to rise more than that, okay, to curb this hyperinflation problem. But now my point is, with all the supply chain now bogged down, with all these problems, okay, with all this pot problem, labor problem, is going to create more inflation, okay? So what if next year it doesn't go down and it shoot above 6%? I think Federal Reserve today is playing a very dangerous game. They try to let the stock market go on so that the Democrat Party can win the Congress and win the Senate next year. But at a certain point in time, there will be a big correction. This bubble won't last forever. Okay? So at a certain point in time, they will need to announce that interest rate. And recently, okay, if I'm not wrong, IMF already issued a warning to US. You better act fast. If you don't increase interest rate fast, and if we are, if we are going into hyperinflation phase, that's it. Okay? Do you know in 1987 what happened? There was a one-day crash okay, in S&P 500. Uh, one day, it crashed 20%. One day, it crashed 20%. That was the biggest crash in history over the last 100 years in terms of a one-day movement. One day, it crashed 20%. And what's the reason behind it? That, that day, we call it the, the Black Monday. Okay, it happened in October 1987, whereby Federal Reserve, at the time the chairman is called Alan Greenspan. Okay, the Federal Reserve one day it raises interest rate by more than one percent. It's not every month zero point two five percent jump. That one day it raises interest rate by more than one percent. That's what caused the that trigger the panic. Okay. So I'm saying that, yes, 
you may think that now the stock market is indeed very good to buy, right? But what if this delayed tactic suddenly turn against them, right? Instead of helping the stock market, but it fuel the hyperinflation phase. Can you imagine today crude oil goes up to $100? Okay, crypto, okay, the big index go up to 100,000 uh, 100, points, okay? It'll be a crazy market, okay? The only way to fight against this inflation will be to increase interest rate at a faster rate than what Federal Reserve predict, what the members today, they predict. And by the way, if you look at the Federal Reserve members forecast, the 17 members, most of them predict that by 2023, most likely the interest rate will increase to 1% to 2%. That means in a span of one year, if they start to increase interest rate at the end of next year, 2022, in a span of one year, they are going to increase interest rate by 1% to 2%. That means every quarter is going to increase by almost 0.5%. Oh, that is a fast increase in interest rate. Oh. So, what happened is the last time round, from 2015, interest rate is increased from 0% to the bubble burst, right? In 2021, which is a few, a few months before COVID, right? It increases to 2% in a span of six years, that is a very slow rise of interest rate. But the moment it increased to around 2%, the bubble burst. This bubble burst, this economic bubble burst, we go into a recession, right? Because of hyper, because the interest rate is too high. Those who borrow money at 0% to play margin, to buy stocks, to buy properties, to buy businesses, they can't pay up their loans anymore. They would rather default. That's what brought about the recession. Okay? Can you imagine Federal Reserve today said uh, in 2023, they are going to rise to 1% to 2%? It will definitely trigger in a, a form of a mini bubble burst, I would say. Okay? The faster they increase, okay, the faster this bubble will burst. So there will be a point in time whereby Federal Reserve need to admit that we are already facing this problem. There will be a point in time whereby they need to increase the interest rate fast. And I really don't know. Okay, I really don't know how they are going to announce to the public. Okay, so hopefully they can give a very measured move. Okay, so I would say that this correction is not, it's not, uh, it's not gone. Okay. It is rather delayed. And the more they delay this correction, the more the stock market is getting riskier and riskier. Okay? So what I will do as an investor, okay, is either I wait for the big correction to come and I will go all in and buy shares again. Or I will go for short-term gain. Okay? If some of you are really impatient to wait for the day, okay, we don't know how long it will run. Some of you ask me, Daniel, you said that there will be a correction. I wait until now Tesla goes up to 1002 already. Huh. So you blame me, okay, right? Or instead of making that $200, it run, it run to sell already, okay? So instead of letting you blame me, I will say that if you want, yes, you can go in and buy some shares. But most likely, we take one month, okay, at one time. So if there's a certain month whereby there's a danger, uh, definitely it, it need, you need to be a bit vigilant, okay? And perhaps you may want to pause in your buying, okay? So we take one month each time. We take each month, okay? Uh, 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 we, 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 we'll, we'll see the trend, okay? We will notify you whether there might be a correction this month, okay? So make sure you're in this game, okay? If you, are, if you want, you can do short-term trading, but with tight stop loss. Okay, now, talking about the sector rotation, okay? I, I, I noticed that finance and energy sectors are weakening. They have one run up a lot in the last few months, but in the uh, in the last few days or even in the last few weeks, it's starting to weaken. So going forward, I don't want you to invest in any financial stocks or energy stocks, okay? And I don't mean US financial stocks and energy stocks. I don't mean your DBS. DBS is still crazy, okay? 
uh, 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 this, uh, uh, Singapore banks are still crazy, okay? But I, I do mean US banks, okay? First thing is because interest rate is not announced yet. So there has been a lot of expectation of interest rate rise going into the Federal Reserve meeting. But Jerome Powell delayed that take, okay? Uh, so-called calm people fears of interest rate rise. So interest rate rise is supposedly a good thing for finance stocks, right? But because now there's no announcement, I don't know when they will announce. I don't know, is it two, three months later or until the tapering stops, okay? But if they don't announce, it will create a certain stress on financial se sector stocks, okay? And in fact, I noticed that some stocks are already weakening, okay? So let's take a look at, for example, Citigroup. Huh. So in the last one month, you can see Citigroup, okay, this stock from $74, it dropped to almost $67, okay? It's on a very weak trend. Huh? It hasn't reached its highest peak of $80 ever since June. Okay, it's still weakening on a weakened trend, okay? So if you see, for example, the SM, uh, EMA lines, okay? CD group uh, definitely is still on a huge downtrend and is still below our two CRS line this month. Uh, so definitely this is not a stock I would like you to look at. Uh. I just want to show you that is 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 this sector is uh going weak. Of course, having said that, uh not a lot of uh not not all the stocks are like CD group, okay. Uh Goldman Shack is still at a high, but over the last few days I noticed that okay. Uh, it seems to struggle. Okay, it seems to struggle. So I do predict that this month, uh, most of the finance stocks may be weakened. Okay, so the trend may suddenly change. Okay, so try not to go in financial stocks now. Okay, same thing with uh, foreign banking stocks like Deutsche Bank. Okay, so you can see Deutsche Bank, the highest peak it reached is $15, right? So uh, the last few days, especially after the earnings announcement, it hasn't been good. In fact, it actually has a gap down from $13. Today is lying at around $12.86. Okay, so that's the financial sector. Now, talking about energy. Okay, I do predict that energy, most likely there might be a bit of correction. Okay, in fact, today I predict energy uh, crude oil price. Uh, most likely it will fall to somewhere around 81 bucks. Okay. So uh what happened is uh in fact today I played a bit of day trade. Huh? So normally when market is dangerous, I would like to hold stocks for long term. So sometimes I do day trading. Okay. So what I did is I shorted crude oil futures. Okay, I shorted the futures. Okay. So I just want to show you what I did. Huh? So in fact, uh, this is my account live now. Okay, I shorted 10 lots of futures at around $82.24. And now I'm making around $4,750. US Okay, not bad, right? For one day's work. Okay, so uh, this is the, the futures price now. Okay, in fact, I do think that it will go down to somewhere around 81 bucks. Yeah, let me see the five minutes chart. Okay. So that's called day trade. Ah. Yeah, so uh, that's my profit target. Okay, $81. So I can almost see a weakening trend in crude oil uh, going forward. Unless, unless in the next few days, it breaks the $85 high barrier. Okay, the seven years high of crude oil price. Even if we break $85, I do anticipate crude oil most likely at $90. It will face a huge resistance. Okay. Um, this year I don't think it will go towards hundred dollars. I have a change in sentiment in regards to crude oil price. Okay, because I kind of know or feel that energy sector stocks are weakening. Okay, and normally when energy sector stocks are weakening, crude oil price will generally have a downtrend. Okay, so uh yeah, that is futures play, okay? So that's my profit target. Oh, today, my profit target is at $81, okay? And in fact, uh, by the way, I sometimes like to day trade. Oh, I just want to share with you, day trading sometimes is good 
especially with a in a market whereby I I I don't feel certain. Okay, I would rather hold short term gains. Okay, one day I just unwind my position. Ah, and this morning I did a a a gold trade. Okay, whereby I bought a gold futures, and I did make around this figure, also around four thousand three hundred US dollars. Ah, just on some day trading on on gold and and crude oil price. Which is, which are some of my favorite products when it comes to day trade, uh, futures. Okay, uh, this this I would I don't have any more position by the way, oh, so I already closed my position. Now I only got crude oil futures around. Okay, but anyway, oh, that's for, uh, a bit of sidetrack. Uh, but going forward, uh, going forward, crude oil price. I do feel, the moment it break below my CRS support of. Eighty dollars, somewhere around seventy nine dollars and eighty cents to around eighty dollars. This figure, the moment it break below eighty dollars, if there's a good candle breaking below eighty dollars, I want you to be careful about crude oil price, and you may even see energy stock suddenly tumble down. Okay, so crude oil price and energy counters. Okay, energy stocks are closely related to each other. A lot of uh, energy stocks in the last few months it has gone up because it went up to almost a seven-year high. Uh, crude oil went up to almost a seven-year high price. Okay, uh, but I feel that there is okay. There's bound to be a correction along the way. Okay, so I anticipate there might be even a small correction of around ten to fifteen percent. Okay. Okay, so uh, if you see, for example, uh, stocks like Ex uh, Chevron. Okay, so you can see it's still at a as a peak. Okay, Chevron or even Exxon Mobil. Okay, but uh, there are some mid tier. I would say mid tier energy companies. I feel has already weakened. Okay, uh, the sector ETF has already tell me that it has a weakened trend. So going forward, I want you to avoid energy stocks too. Okay. Now. The third sector I want to focus on is healthcare. Okay, uh, healthcare has already weakened for months. There are a lot of stocks. Okay, don't talk about Pfizer because Pfizer has a uh, recently announced that don't know what. Okay, that drug. Okay, it's a cure. Okay, so you take the pill, you stay at home, you'll be fine. You won't have COVID anymore. Of course, suddenly the stock price get up crazily. Okay. So that's a one-off event, but generally speaking, healthcare counters has already, uh, weakened for months. Okay, but having said that, I predict that healthcare stocks might have a turnaround in the next few days or even weeks. Okay, so there are two stocks that I feel, going forward, it might strengthen. So I want you to put in a watch list. Okay, one stock is called Mgen, which is one of my favorite. I would say healthcare counter. And the other stocks I never buy before is called Vertex Pharmaceutical. Okay, so let me show you what happened to these counters. Okay, okay, Amgen, A M G, A M G N. Okay, let me look at the one year chart. I like stocks that drop for many months. Okay, but first and foremost, that it needs to have strong fundamental. Okay, I like stocks that drop for many months, whereby, uh, for many months is below my CRS lines. Okay, then suddenly one month there's a turnaround. This is what I call a reversal strategy. Okay, a reversal stock, stocks that has been on a downtrend for more than two or three months. Then suddenly there's a turnaround this month. It may be because of a strong earnings announcement. It may be because of analyst upgrade. It may be because of some positive news coming up. Okay, but Mgen is a stock that recently announced earnings, and you can see suddenly the trend change. Okay, suddenly the trend change. So you can see the earnings announcement. It was quite good. Okay, four dollar and sixty seven cents is the EPS actual figures. It's more than estimated result of four dollar twenty two cents. Right. So that's Mgen, okay. But what I want to point out to you is this was a, okay, technical chart wise, uh, this was a 
higher high that break above the last high. A lot of stocks has this feature whereby suddenly it break above the last high and there was a bit of correction or what we call pullback. The moment it pull back to a certain area, that is the trigger point whereby I will kind of buy this share. Okay, so uh, normally I like to buy shares when it pull back to somewhere around my supporting price of the CRS lines. So that would be perfect. Okay, that would be the perfect entry point. Okay. So if you ask me, I will say uh, this stock you can put inside your arsenal, you can put inside your watch list. I don't mean you buy now. Uh, around $220 is, is a, still a resistance barrier or the next resistance barrier. Okay. But if you pull back to somewhere around $210 or even somewhere around $207 would be perfect. Okay. I will say that that will be uh, a stock that I like to have. Okay. Because suddenly it has turned around. Okay from a mid-term downtrend. The next stock, uh, of course, there are some positive news. If you did a bit of read up, okay, uh, they are kicking off uh, construction, uh, construction projects on biomanufacturing plant with plans to uh, so-called invest, I don't know how many billions dollars, okay? So uh, I would say it's a piece of good news, okay, going forward for MGen. The other stocks I like, okay, Uh, it's called uh, Vertex Pharmaceutical. V R T X, right? Yeah, okay. Now, similarly, I want you to note this is a stock that's on a multi months of downtrend, multi months from $306, it falls to almost $180, okay? So, this is a very weak stock, but what I like about this stock is suddenly, Suddenly, this month there is a turnaround. Okay, it has multi months of downtrend. Then suddenly there's a turnaround. Then it went up because of this very powerful earnings announcement. Uh, normally I won't try to catch at such a high price. I will wait for a bit of like what I said pullback. Okay, it has already break above the recent high price. So if there's a bit of pullback to somewhere around one hundred. Perhaps 180 to 190 bucks, that'll be good. Okay, that'll be a good area to, to catch this counter. Okay. But I just want to share with you uh this counter you may want to put inside watch list. Why? Because during the earnings announcement, the company actually raises its sales guidance. Okay, not only the company report a better third quarter result in terms of their earnings per share, but it actually increases the sales guidance. I always like stocks that, that have a positive guidance, we call it. Oh, that means they said that next quarter, they are going to make more than what the analysts think. They actually upgrade their own sales figures. Okay, so That's what we call a positive guidance. Okay? So positive guidance is always a play that I like and Wall Street traders like institution like okay because it means that they will outperform what the market thinks over the next few months oh. so to me it's a ex it's a positive expectation play okay so uh maybe you may want to put it inside your watch list okay of course there's a certain resistance somewhere around 200 200 dollars okay so either you wait for a pullback okay but if you buy now make sure you buy very little okay try to accumulate along the way okay and make sure you put your stop loss, okay? So for such a stock, okay, let's say it's a very strong downtrend stock. Normally what I would do, even if I go in and buy, I will put a certain stop loss, like what I said, okay? Going forward in the next few months, I do feel there may be short-term bullishness, but, okay, I don't want to be caught in a sudden crash, right? So definitely you need to put a stop loss somewhere. So a good stop loss will be below this, Okay, uh, lowest price in this now trend of $176. Just in case I'm wrong, okay, just in case I'm wrong, let's say I already accumulated the share, so uh, I may want to dump my shares and, and, and take my losses, okay, fast. Okay, that's two stocks I recommend in the healthcare sector. So you can see healthcare sector, especially these two stocks, uh, has a weakened trend over the last few months, but there may be some turnaround, okay. Now, talking about strong sector stocks, Sorry that my time is short. Uh. Okay. 
uh, strong sector stock. One sector that I would say you need to watch out for is the consumer discretionary sector. Uh, basically, it means products that you don't need. Okay, it's a luxury item. Okay, airline companies. Okay, uh, tourism industry companies. Okay, entertainment companies. Okay, cruise ship companies. They are called consumer discretionary in uh, sector or even industry, right? So these are some of the stocks that I feel. Uh, number one is on the uptrend, but it's getting stronger. The reason why it's getting stronger is because COVID is almost over. So if Pfizer drug is really approved, and, and that is really, that's not a vaccine even, that's a drug, okay? And if that cure is really found, it's almost like you, it's almost like a flu medicine. COVID will be over in the next six months. And definitely it call for celebration, okay? That means you can fly, you can go for tour, you can go to Disney, okay? Definitely it will boil down, it will, it will, it will be good for this industry, all right? And... Um, there are two stocks that I feel, uh, which is good. Okay, going forward. Uh, number one is Boeing. Okay, same thing. Boeing has been quite pressured down over the last few months, but you can sense that there's a very strong support somewhere around two hundred and seven dollars, and this month it it break out of my CRS lines, and it's a very powerful breakout. Okay, it's a very powerful breakout. Of course, this breakout coincides with Expedia earnings announcement. Expedia, uh, if some of you know, has a terrific earnings last week, right? Uh, so $3.53 is almost double the expected figure in terms of EPS of $1.21, okay? Very powerful earnings. And of course, it's, it's because of holiday season. And it's also because that Europe is opening up, it's travel lanes, okay, US is opening up, okay, I would say the whole world will be opening up in the next few months, okay, so definitely uh, tourism is back, hotel industry is back, uh, casino will be back, okay, same with airline companies, okay, so you can see that uh, after dropping for a few months, there was a turnaround last month, okay, then Boeing, same thing, uh, keep track of this counter, okay, then uh, next thing is Disney, my all-time favorite in terms of entertainment. Okay, it's called Disney. Okay, I always say Disney should be part of your retirement portfolio. Okay, one thing about Disney is number one, it's a it's a COVID recovery stock, definitely. Number two, okay. It it does so well in terms of acquisition. Disney has a culture of acquiring good companies that can add more profits and more revenue into their businesses, okay? Whether is it the ESPN acquisition, National Geographic acquisition, or whether is it the Pizza Animations company, uh, they always, always, in the last few years, they always acquire company that can add into their businesses. Uh, so, I would say that it's a very good uh, bot as they, they know how to execute acquisition very, very well, okay? And not only that, uh, the second thing about Disney is they have another thing called the Disney Plus, okay? This Disney Plus, I will say that is will definitely increase their earnings a lot going forward in the next few years, okay? Take a look at what happened to Netflix today, right? It is a crazy stock. It's a crazy stock. I've been talking about Netflix for years, okay? The up and coming one will be Disney Plus. Okay, the subscriber users, okay, their subscribers are growing by leaps and bounds. So in future, definitely, um, they will acquire more uh, studios, companies. They will acquire more firms. Okay, so you can see, even uh Netflix today, right? They acquire a lot of drama, uh, Korea drama, Korea series. They have Running Man holes in their uh, they have squid, okay, it's squid game, right? So, so they can acquire anytime, okay. They have the, they have the wealth, they have the money to go and acquire big big companies, okay. So same with Disney Plus, okay. So in fact, uh, uh, for me, I will be switching over, okay, to subscribe to Disney Plus or Netflix. So instead of subscribing to Singtel, okay, 
whereby Singtel is getting lousier and lousier. Okay, so today with Singtel, I can't even see my Fox movie anymore. They are getting out. I can't even see my National Geographic anymore. So they are getting out. Uh, they are being acquired by Disney already. So the only way I can see all these favorite thing, favorite channels is through Disney Plus or Netflix. Uh, so definitely I I will be the person that switch over. Okay, my subscription subscription. So uh, I want you to take note of Disney. Okay, so not only is it a COVID recovery stock, but what I like about this stock is okay, is is strong acquisition plans. Okay. Okay, uh, Royal Caribbean has already recovered, okay, Royal Caribbean is at all-time high. I just want to show you, okay, going into this uh, Christmas season, holiday season, uh, so the consumer discretionary stocks are running, okay, so especially stocks that have not run yet, like Boeing or Disney, you may want to pick up some of the shares, uh, but having said that, same thing, put your stop loss tight. Okay, below the support. Okay, good. Okay, the next thing I want to do, okay, uh, of course, I have two more stocks for you today. Okay, the next thing I want to do is uh, I would like to give you a free digital report. Okay, like what I said, okay, next year, uh, I always emphasize this, okay, buy into 5G stocks, please. You see how Nvidia is today. You see how many of the 5G stocks are booming, okay? So in fact, uh, one month ago, I issued this digital report, okay? If some of you got this digital report, you know what are the stocks I like, okay? Right? Going forward, in the next one year, the whole world, the whole world, they will go all out, okay? Once this uh, worker problem is solved or labor problem is solved, they will go all out, all countries in the world, especially developed countries, they will go all out to implement 5G infrastructure. China is already one of the leading countries in the world in terms of 5G infrastructure. US will go all out to do it. Singapore will do it. The whole world will do it. Korea will do it. Taiwan will do it. Okay. The China will, will, will implement 5G infrastructure all over China. Okay. The whole world will do it. Europe will do it. Okay. So definitely, if you are in the 5G business, you are in the 5G industry, you are 5G counter, you are going to benefit from this 5G, I call it the 5G boom, okay? So if I have already done my due diligence, in fact, out of the four stocks, okay, three already are running, okay? And that's one that did not run, okay? So that one that did not run, make sure you know what is it, okay? So if you want this free digital report, Okay, if you want this free digital report, all I want you to do is these four steps. Okay, just do these four steps. I'm going to issue the digital report free for you. Okay, number one, like our page, Daniel Low Investment Group. Okay, like the page. Okay, Daniel Low Investment Group. Ah, so that's number one. So go to Facebook and like our page. Huh? You can't like our page in YouTube. Okay, ah, number two, share this video to your loved ones. Share it as a public post. Number three, tag as many friends as possible. And number four, in this video here, comment shared. The moment you comment shared, our colleague behind the scene, okay, will know that you already shared. Okay, of course, we can see whether you shared in a public post. If you did, then we are going to give you the digital report free. Okay, so you, sh you, you should be able to receive this report within five days after you post chat, okay? So if you want this digital report, of course, having said that, okay, I already said one of the stocks that I commented already burst through the roof and that is NVIDIA. If in October, early October, you see this digital report and buy into NVIDIA today, you make 33% gain. What happened if you play the options, okay? Options is a derivative, you can make much, much more, okay? So what I want to say is, yeah, ample opportunities okay there are ample opportunities going into the 5g boom okay so if you want to receive this free just do the four steps okay thank you so much okay now talking about the strong sector now right so just now there's one strong sector i thought about it's called consumer discretionary right that's going to benefit from this covid recovery 
Another strong sector, of course, is called the tech sector, which I would say is the most popular sector. Almost 70% of retail investors out there, if I ask you, did you buy energy stocks? Most of you won't even know what is an energy counter, okay? Consumer discretion, maybe you don't have, okay? But you will have ample, many, many tech stocks. Many tech stocks, okay? So, uh, however many already run, right? So, whether is it uh, Tesla or whether is it Microsoft, uh, Amazon has been running uh, uh, over the last few days, okay? It has already ran, okay? NVIDIA has ran, right? So, uh, these are some of the stocks I feel is recovering. And I want you to take notice, okay? So, I only like stocks that actually has dropped for a few months and now it's recovering. One is called Facebook, the other is called GoDaddy, okay? GDDY, okay, if you know what is it, okay, GoDaddy is a, is a, is a website, okay, where you can subscribe, okay, to its features, its, its services, right? So, Facebook and GoDaddy, okay? So, let's take a look. This is Facebook. Facebook has been dropping for a couple of months because of its rumors, because of its, uh, what we call, it, uh, problems with its staff. They got complaint, they got to know what, okay? Uh, but to me, it doesn't dent my confidence in this counter. In fact, over the last one month, I feel that definitely this is a stock that you need to have for the long haul, okay? It's to me a retirement counter. Because the moment 5G infrastructure is, is implemented, not only will you see smart car coming up, you will see one thing called the VR, which is what we call virtual reality. In fact, Mark Zuckerberg in the last one month already talked about VR, okay, virtual reality. In future, you are going to communicate with your boss at home. You can see his face. Okay, you can see the images of your so-called boss shouting at you. Okay, this will happen. Okay, so don't think that you work from home, you will escape from your boss. Okay, no longer with VR around. Okay, so VR are already implemented in gaming industry, but it will be implemented all over the whole world in our lives. Okay, whether is it in the office, Okay, whether is it okay, you can use VR to see movies, okay, big big screen, okay. Oh. Uh, uh, and you can share around with your friends, you can see the image of your grandpa, grandma sitting together in a sofa. That's called VR, okay? It's virtual reality, okay? Of course, sometimes okay, it is so far ahead that we can't even imagine you know, that scenario that one day you can actually sit, okay, with your grandpa while he's not beside you, right? That's called virtual reality, okay? But I think that with 5G implementation, VR will start to take off. It's almost like AI, artificial intelligence. We've talked about AI robots for years. But because we don't have the speed okay, of information transfer, but the moment you have that, this industry will take off, okay? So virtual reality is definitely one industry that you can look at, okay, in the future. And in fact, Mark Zuckerberg said that it is going to change their name because of this industry, right? It's called Metaverse today, okay? So anyway, what I want to share with you is in the short run, it has already broken out of our CRS lines. That's number one. This month, it has turned bullish. Number two, it has broken out of our EMA lines, a lot of EMA lines, okay? It broke out of the blue color and red color lines. And, and if it can sustain Okay, I would say most likely there is a good chance in a short run there's huge momentum. Okay, of course the temporary resistance here is still at around three hundred fifty dollars, uh, which is three hundred forty seven to three hundred fifty dollars, which is on Friday it reached that point and it has, there's a bit of pullback. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this counter. Uh, so uh, if eventually it break out three hundred fifty, there will be huge momentum going forward. Uh, that's Facebook. The other is GoDaddy. G D D Y, right? Okay, GoDaddy has a very good earnings. It suddenly gap up, but there was a huge pullback. And this is a pullback I like. The moment it pull back to the support lines, okay, or my CRS lines of somewhere around 70 bucks. This is the place whereby I would say it's good to accumulate, okay? This share. Okay, so GoDaddy has a very powerful earnings, okay? 
uh, 58 cents to almost 34 cents estimated value. Uh, so you may want to take a look. So for a few months, it has been below our CRS lines, it has been on a downtrend, but now it suddenly break off. Okay. Now, okay, another two stocks I want you to look at is uh, got to do with finance or even uh, what we call a, a payment system. Okay. Not really a finance as in it's a bank. It's credit facility like MasterCard or Visa. Okay. I noticed that MasterCard or Visa has fallen quite a lot. But there may be huge momentum going forward in the next few days, okay? So especially uh, MasterCard, okay? You can see that it's almost breaking, trying to break off its resistance uh, moving average lines. But it is slightly above our CRS today, right? So uh, you may want to put it in your arsenal, okay? In your watch list, okay? So MasterCard and Visa, both of these shares has fallen quite a lot. But there may be turnaround coming up. Okay? Okay, good. Okay, today I don't have much time with you. Okay? Uh, in fact, uh, my team tell me that okay, I shouldn't drag too long. Okay? Because it will bore you down. Uh, so sorry that today I can't communicate too much with you. Uh, there will be in the next few months uh, definitely time whereby we can communicate. I can help to answer some of your questions. Okay? But today uh, I just want to share with you that. Okay? The danger might not be over yet, okay? It is prolonged, it is delayed because Federal Reserve is trying all out to keep this bubble keep on inflating, right? But there will be a point in time whereby this bubble might burst. Till then, you can still play short term because like this month is still above our CRS line. There is still a, what we call a, a, a uptrend. Uh, there's still possible rise in price and you're talking about a higher price getting higher and higher, right? So I will urge you to buy in some shares that hasn't run a lot yet. So there are some counters that today I recommend you. So it's because uh, I've been keeping track of these shares and I noticed that after a few months of drop, there's a bit of turnaround uh, in terms of trend. Okay, so it, it seems like there is a start of a mid-term run. Uh, so you might want to keep track of these counters. But having said that, make sure it's a short-term short uh, uh, short play, short-term strategy. And make sure you put your stop loss tight. Okay. So just in case uh, you'd like to know more about stock analysis, about technical analysis, about charting, you want to know more about how to buy stocks and make money. Okay. So this is one last event, physical event I'm going to launch this year. There won't be any more going into the Christmas season. Okay. So if you want to know more about the stock market, do come for our stock investing masterclass. It's free for you. So whereby I'm going to help you to understand more about stock market, especially in US stock market. How are you going to leverage on perhaps some derivative to make more money than the counter itself? Okay, so this is one last event for the year. So if you are really interested, you'd like to know more, you'd like to gain some knowledge, uh, you'd like to learn about investing systems, okay? So uh, I would like you to sign up for these two classes in both English or Chinese, okay? So... Uh, English class is this website, Chinese class is this website. Go to www.dl-investment.com slash en for English and dl-investment.com slash cn for Chinese, okay? So what we are going to do in this masterclass is I'm going to share with you the market outlook for the whole entire year of 2022 amid this COVID recovery. Today, I talk just a bit of it, okay? But I'm going to talk in depth what may happen in, two, in 2022, okay? And number two, the great 5G tech boom and its implications on the stock market, okay? So what will happen, okay, to the different, different industries, okay? What will happen to some of the industries? What are some industries that will benefit from the 5G boom, okay? What are some of the AI stocks you can look at? What are some of the smart car technology stocks you can look at, okay? How do you build your retirement portfolio, okay, going forward, okay? Number four, what are the three traits of a successful investor? And lastly, how to make a passive monthly income, okay? So I'm going to share with you a bit of derivatives trading, okay? So just now I did share with you some of my trades, okay, on derivatives like futures, okay? I'm going to share with you more in this class, okay? So uh, hopefully, okay, so if you are... Going forward, okay, I feel that, okay, the world is walking out of COVID soon. 
Uh, so hopefully you can take advantage of this, okay? And hope that next year it will be a very good year for all of you, okay? So if you want, this will be the last class for me this year. Just sign up. There are very limited seats, okay? So thank you so much for your attendance today. Um, next month, I'm going to uh, talk to you more about the market for that month, okay? For next month, how is it? Okay, especially when Christmas season come, uh, how is the stock market like, okay? So uh, see you again in future, in our future Facebook live videos and YouTube live videos, okay? So thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.